let's get started. So thank you for coming to my talk. My name is Stephen Boyd. I'm going to be talking about the case for an SOC power management driver. Wow, it's really dark. So this is the agenda we have. I'm basically going to go through the background of what's an SOC, just to make sure we all have a baseline level of what it is. And then we're going to talk about the power management approaches we have in the kernel to, you, to, to manage power of devices. Then the problem that I have that I want to talk about today, and then some previous and ongoing solutions that people have tried to do to fix this problem. And then my proposed solution, and then we'll finish up with questions. So let's just start from the beginning. What's an SOC? Well, it's a blank page. SOC is a box, right? Let's say you have an SOC. It's just a system on a chip. There's some devices inside. You might have a USB controller and a USB five. Might be connected to each other. Might have an SD MMC controller so you can read a disk. Might have some IOs. Might do some I squared C spy, etc. Might have a GPU so you can display some stuff. And you might have a clock that goes into your SSC so you can actually control these devices and turn them on and off. And that clock may feed some PLLs. And those PLLs maybe, you know, eventually go to some device, some devices, some of your devices. But you need a clock controller so you can actually control these PLLs. So you're going to put a clock controller device inside your SSC as well. That's going to have direct connections to the PLLs and some gates. And then you might have some voltage supply to your SSC. That's going to come in as well to the SSC and another pin. And you may put some power domain around your GPU, like some hardware power domain, just so you can save power so the GPU is, can be turned off completely and not actually toggle in any way. And to do that, you might have to implement another power controller device in your SSC. And that power controller device may take that voltage supply in and send it into the hardware domain to power the GPU. And it may also take some clock in so it can clock the GPU. And then you might need to add some reset controller. Great. So, right, so you have to add some resets controls, and then might need to feed into the GPU as well. <laughs> so you have a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of devices. And the PM resources that you have are these clocks and resets and power, power domains. And you might have external power domains, right? You might have external power coming into your SOC with that VDD. You might have external clocks coming into your SOC through that clock input. Then the problem becomes, how do we map this into device tree? Right, so in device tree, we're going to make this whole big SOC node in our device tree, and it's going to have this compatible simple bus. And we're going to have a bunch of different nodes in there, pretty much corresponding to these devices. Right, and so you have the SOC, the gray box, it points to the SOC node. You have the clock controller, it points to the clock, clock controller node. Everything kind of maps, right? You just keep mapping. And I'll just, just kind of skip along. Because we got kind of all know that we're going to basically map all these devices in from the SOC in hardware into DT, and we're gonna describe them with these connections, right? And so there's gonna be these things like clocks properties inside DT, there's gonna be power domains properties in DT, and then you're gonna use these P handles, right? Like the CLK or RST, these are, these are labels that we're gonna to use to reference our, our resources that we're using. The other thing to know about uh, DT is that this, uh, this is the only other interface that we use besides ACPI, pretty much to talk to firmware. Otherwise, you have board.c files, which we don't really use anymore. So what are the power manager approaches we have today? Well, with DT, we're implementing DT. We do power management in device tree. We're pretty much handling a dozen frameworks. Well, it feels like a dozen, but it's probably half a dozen, All right? So in device power management with DT, what we do is we have the SOC, right? That's the underlying layer. That's the SOC. It's hardware. And then we have this really thin layer of DT. It's the firmware. It just describes how things work, right? It's basically a database. Then we have these providers that provide power management features. So these are like provider drivers. These are clock drivers, reset drivers, et cetera. Right? And those things just communicate through DT, kind of. Not really. Right? DT is just an interface, a database. So they just know that they have to talk over DT to talk to the hardware. And then we have frameworks we build on top of that. So power management frameworks exist, like clocks and resets, interconnects, power domains, et cetera. Right, those things talk to the drivers, the provider drivers, or the supplier drivers. And then we have to actually put real drivers into the system to actually control those things like the GPUs and the MMCs. 
Those are our consumers, right? Those things consume resources that are power management. Those things have to talk through the consumer APIs. And so they talk to all these different frameworks, like the clock framework or the reset framework or the interconnect framework, right? And so every driver is pretty much implementing their own code to get resources, get power management resources, and then enable these things, disable these things, change the settings of these things. It's complicated. With ACPI, this is not complicated, right? We don't have to get a ton of resources and then turn them all on in our driver code. We just use ACPI. So how does it work in ACPI land? Well, you know, we, we have the SSC already. Then we have this really fat layer of ACPI. I made it bigger. <laughs> and that thing just talks directly to the hardware, right? There's nothing else going on. Then we have our consumer drivers, as we always do. But these things talk through the DevPM APIs. Uh, I call them APIs, but they're not really APIs, right? They talk through power domains. So we, they make power domains, and they sit in between ACPI and the consumer drivers. And these power domains let them control all power for devices by basically just implementing features in the dev PM APIs to do so. So you can do things like, they can do runtime PM, they can manage the power, power state of a device through runtime PM or through system PM, like system-wide power transitions, like suspend or resume. And they can also even like uh, set QoS on devices and then say, hey, I want this device not to go to the deepest power state, maybe a slightly shallower power state. That's all through device PM APIs, and it's nothing like a consumer API we have in device tree. Right? And so they just talk to these PM domains pretty much. They don't talk to ACPI. And the PM domains just talk to ACPI. So it's like an intermediate layer. So how do the PM domains work? Well, they act like this mini device driver for your device. They pretty much take all the power manager features out of your device driver and put them into this PM domain layer. And the ACPI support, when PM domains were added, they actually added, Raphael actually added ACPI support as well when PM domains ex were created so that you could, uh, so they could control the device power states. I, I need to make my slide bigger so I can see. Hold on. So this is pretty much how PM domains work. They attach to, to every device. They can attach to any device in the system because for a struct device, they can have one PM domain. And with ACPI, there's these two power states that are the most important. This is D0, which is on, and D3, which is off. And ACPI implements this support by basically writing in the PM domain code in this ACPI general PM domain how to turn on and off a device by basically asking ACPI, hey, put this device into D0 or put this device into D3, depending on what the device driver wants to happen. And also, importantly, puts the device into D0 before it gets probed. So if the system is trying to probe devices, it's going to power on any device that it sees that's a platform device in ACPI by saying, hey, ACPI, put this, on, put this into D0, and then, then call driver probe, and driver probe can run. And then when the device is, when the driver is unbound, ACPI is going to, going to put it into the, the deepest power state it can, basically power it off as much as you can. So this device is not on, because there's no driver driving it, right? And the other important thing to know in ACPI is that there's no subsystem frameworks that they're using. Like, they're not using the clock framework very much to power anything, right, to turn anything on or off. They don't use that. They just use ACPI. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that power drive, or drivers, like consumer drivers, they need to be portable, right? And they need to work with both ACPI and DT. And right now, they pretty much have to know, hey, am I running on DT or am I running on ACPI? And then they have to know, oh, I'm running on, on DT, so I must power on my device now at Pro so I can actually read stuff. Whereas in ACPI, it's like, hey, it's already on. Don't do anything, right? And the other problem is that the PM integration details in device tree, like SOCs have to integrate all these devices into the SOC. And that requires like a lot of power management glue, as you saw earlier. All those details about how to power sequence these things, how to, how to power, like power on some clock and then a reset before and after, like those orders of operations are all basically spread through the entire driver tree. Every platform driver pretty much has to know how to do these things and they have to know what SSC they're running on and how to power on and off these things, right? And the other problem that we have is that those PM resources, as you saw earlier, they're provided by the same platform devices on the same platform bus that the consumer devices are on. 
And so all these devices are on the same plat are, are on the same bus, and they can probe in any order. So it makes it quite complicated. And and the overall power state of the SSC is completely unknown because it's basically buried inside all the kernel subsystems for power management, right? We don't know what, uh, what clock is on or off or what regulator is on and off because those are just like isolated and kept away from each other. We don't know from a holistic viewpoint of the SSC, hey, what things are you using and what things are on and off outside of this SSC, right? Like we don't know. We have to go ask every single framework, what's the story? So what do we want in a solution? Well, we need some solutions to this problem, and we need to make sure that we don't actually change device tree, because that would be that would be like a huge change and require like backwards incompatible changes, and pretty much device tree is not going to accept that. The other thing we want to do is we want to remove all the SSC PN details from platform drivers, so that they don't have to, you know, power on something before they probe, or during probe, or get even even have to get PN resources because it's just like a bunch of glue that they don't really need to do. And we also want to let drivers keep using those resources if they really want to. Maybe they have to change some phase of the clock, or maybe they have to tune some feature of some other PM resource. That's not really like an on-off state. It's more of like a, hey, I need to figure out what this rate is or something, right? Like I need to figure out how to, how to calculate some rate for my internal dividers so I can figure out how to calculate a clock rate that I really need. So like those kind of things, we, we can let them exist until a later point. And we also want to provide these consistent device power states so that they know, like, hey, my platform can turn on just by describing what these things are, like what power resources I use, turn them on, right? We shouldn't have to require the every SOC driver, every SOC compatible string to basically say, hey, turn on this device, turn this off, turn off this resource, turn on this re other resource. And the other nice thing that we'd want to do is we want to turn off all these unused PM resources if we can, right? That'd be nice, really, really a bonus. The other thing that I think is another bonus of doing this is that we can, we can ex uh, further expand the usage of runtime PM in the system. Not every driver today is actually using runtime PM, but I think if we did this, pretty much every driver would want to. So what are some previous and ongoing solutions to this problem? So this has been going on for probably more than a decade. And one of the problems, or one of the things that was the first problem identified was that we need to solve that probe ordering. And so many people have attempted to fix this problem. And the first attempt was this resource tracking allocation framework. That was pretty much like, what PM resources are you using in your driver? Let me know, and then I will get them and track them, and then I'll unbind your driver when, when those PM resources go away. And then there was another attempt to do this on-demand device probing. It was kind of similar. And finally, the device link series was merged that was basically saying, like, what are the dependencies between two devices? And these aren't parent-child dependencies. This is just like, hey, are you a supplier, as this device B is? And are you a consumer? Let me make a device link between you. And the other, the other important thing of the, front of the patch series is that it didn't actually implement it at all. As a, didn't implement the creation of the device links. All it did was just provide the framework to do so. So what had to happen after that was we had to implement firmware, device, firmware dev link, as it's called, or firmware device links. So that you can actually read device tree and say, hey, what are, these, what are the links that I need to make, right? And so firmware dev link pretty much goes through and says, are these a consumer, are these a supplier? Let me make device links between all these devices. So that we can avoid any of these probe defer loops because what we're gonna do is if the device links, we're gonna say, hey, are you a consumer? Well, your supplier hasn't probed yet, so I'm not even gonna try and probe you yet because you're not going to be able to get your resources anyway. So after we solved the probe ordering problem, we're like, when can we turn off uh, all these unused PM resources, right? And I have this little back and forth, which is basically, well, we can turn them off when we know they're unused, right? It's great, it's recursive. But how do we know they're unused? Well, if they're disabled in DT, obviously, with status disabled, they're not, they're not going to use those PM resources. And if they're a consumer driver, then we haven't enabled them in the config, right? then we're not gonna use the resources because we're never gonna bind that driver. But great, but what if it's like built in or a module or we built a module later, right? Well, how about if an, every con PM supplier has probed of the, all the consumer, if the PM supplier is probed and all the consumers of that PM supplier are probed, then we know that everybody's claiming the resources, so maybe we can turn them off. And this is pretty much how we decided to implement sync state in the device driver core. 
So Think State was also introduced as part of the firmware devlink series. And the idea was that if we solve the probe ordering, we can just power down all these un unclaimed resources, right? So the general idea is we call sync state when, when this device link is made, we say, okay, have all these device links probed? Every, every consumer has probed? Okay, great, let me call sync state now. And as a, you as a supplier can go turn off all your unused resources, right? Because all your consumer drivers are, are bound. Cool. The problem is that it doesn't really work. We can't do the power off on sequencing that we need to do between all the kernel subsystems because what we're doing is we're calling every supplier in the system saying, oh, okay, all your consumers are done. But we don't know, like, we don't talk between the kernel frameworks today, right? We don't say, hey, regulator framework, I need to power off you, power off that regulator after I turn off the clock because I don't want to keep it, you know, clocking with no power. And the other problem that it has is that it seems that all these PM resources are supplied by device drivers on the kernel. In the ACPI, we don't have that, right? ACPI is it's hiding all this feature, all this stuff from you, and so you don't know when to call sync state. There's no reason to call sync state. There's no supplier at all. And the other thing is that it requires all these consumer drivers to actually probe. Well, we never know when they're all going to probe because we don't know when they're going to when the module will finally be loaded. So we have a kind of a problem there, and and we pretty much have a timeout right now to say, hey, sync state needs to timeout after so many seconds because we don't know. And another problem is that firmware devlink is not actually always correct. So if you have loops between suppliers and consumers, it just kind of says, okay, when both of these have probed, then we're, then we're good. But we don't really know if any resource that those things have is actually optional. And in the sense like, it may not actually need to turn on that resource to talk to its hardware initially, right? It could just be something for a, a specific power state of the device, like a high performance state. Like I might need to use this later. So the other solution is we can just go back to ACPI, right? That solves all our problems. It'd be easy. Well, the problem is we can't because we have firmware that's shipping today and we're not gonna go like rewrite all the firmware to just use ACPI and solve this problem. So let's brainstorm a little bit. Well, earlier solutions were all taking like this bottom up or top down approach, right? Like we are trying to track what, what consumers are, are in the system and, and then whenever I, any consumer is there, then we know the resources are claimed, right? Or we may know like, oh, with device links and sync state, like all the suppliers, right? They, they, they are in control, they know what they do and they don't need to talk to anybody else in the system. They are like fully isolated and very happy to work by themselves. So I'm proposing that we think about something else. Let's use PM domains, right? To sit in the middleware and as the middle layer between the suppliers and the consumers. And it'll nicely align with ACPI because ACPI is already using PM domains and it'll let us coordinate the power sequencing between all the kernel frameworks. And another important thing to know is that all the, all the PM resources are, are today like influenced by these consumer device power states, right? So the shared, the shared resources, they, they feed in to the device power state of the whole SOC. And we wanna know that a supplier has, is uh, like, we're trying to like avoid getting into these supplier uh, consumer interactions in, in general. So let's use generic PM domains. So generic PM domains is like a layer on top of the just PM domains, the dev PM domain. It basically inherits the dev PM domain and wraps it in another struct. And it lets us power on things and power off things when they probe or when drivers probe or remove. And it's very similar to how ACPI works. The, the other thing that's kind of neat about PM domains is that we, they can contain many devices, right? And so they, we could coordinate the power for like many devices that are all sharing the same PM resource. If we have that case today, I don't know. Some of you might have that case. And the other good thing about PM domains is that, hey, DT bindings are already supported, right? We have power domain cells and power domains properties in DT that say like, hey, I'm a consumer of power domain or I'm a supplier of power domains. And we've hooked us all into the system. The other cool thing I missed here is that they're nestable. So we can say like, hey, I have an overall power domain for the whole SOC, right? And that thing is like the parent of all the other power domains for every device, which can let us like actually describe the SOC power state. The problem is that no one really thinks PM domains are going to work. 
It doesn't seem very safe. There's been a lot of barriers to, I feel, adoption of generic PM domains because DT really encourages you to describe those all in device tree. Because, hey, we already have that property, so why don't we just do that, right? Just use that property. So we could fake it out by adding this power domain cells to every PM supplier in the system, or we could fake it and be like, hey, that SOC node, that's a power domain, right? So that could be a power domain provider. And then every child node could just have power domains property to point to the SOC parent node. None of these solutions really seem great to me because it requires us to go change DT. And, and I don't want to go change every binding in the system. That sounds like a huge pain and basically impossible. And so let's try and let's avoid that. And the other problem with using generic power domains is that we can't get in the middle of device creation today. So right now in the system, if you have civil PM bus in your SOC node, the system is going to basically create a device with OF platform D4 populate and also add it to the platform bus all in one call. So we can't even like associate a PM domain with a struct device because we don't know when the driver is going to probe. That device is going to be created and we can't just like get in between or like try and use some hack to do like earlier in a calls to, hey, you know, let me insert a power domain here. I hope that you haven't been probed yet. <laughs> kind of situation or like I'll, I'll unbind you and then rebind you. It's just not going to work. The other thing that we have a problem, slight problem, is that only one PM domain can exist per device. So if you have in DT that you have some power domain property, well, it's already technically claimed. And so you can't just in, add another PM domain because the core code is going to say, oh, I see you have a power domains property in DT. So let me associate some PM domain from that provider that you said you use in DT. And removing direct control of those PM resources is actually going to be hard sometimes. Some devices, as I said earlier, are going to have to, like, to figure out what their clock rate really is to program some internal divider or say, like, you know, I need to change some link rate of my device controller or my display controller. It needs a particular link rate, so I need to figure out what my clock really is. Right? So these, these kind of things are not going to be so easy to just like completely erase from the system. So my proposal is to implement this SOC PM driver. The TLDR is that we're going to basically bind a driver to the SOC node, and we're going to associate PM domains with all the platform devices that we're going to create at the SOC node, and then we're going to move all the PM code that we can from platform drivers today into these PM domains. And then we're going to be done. Now, usually when I say this, people go, oh, yeah, that sounds great. You want to basically write a board file. I'm like, no, I don't want to write a board file. Right? I don't want to do that at all. I just want to create PM domains and attach them to these devices so that I can remove all the code from the drivers. I don't want to go populate devices and describe all their properties and say all their connections between devices. I don't care. Right? I just want to say that these devices exist, they try to them DT, and they are associated with some PM domain that I've made in software so that I can power them on and off. So what's the block diagram solution? This is it. Oh, I didn't animate this one. It's good. So <laughs> the SOCs and the speed still be there, right? Everything is pretty much the same. What we did is we basically inserted this dev PM domains in the middle of the consumers and the suppliers. And we put it on top of the consumer APIs so that the device drivers don't have to talk to anything unless they really want to by basically just using dev PM, API, PM APIs like ACPI does and they call it a day. So what's the implementation? Well, what we do is we basically introduce a driver for the SOC node, like vendor SOC 9000, and then we're going to call OF platform default populate. Did it. We made devices, right? That's pretty much exactly what OF platform default populate does today, but without a specific compatible string. So we just add this extra compatible string so we can say, hey, I want to use this specific driver. And then we add the PM domains to all the child devices that we've added to the platform bus. So what we're going to do is we're going to split OF platform D4 populate in half. We're going to create the platform devices in one call, and we're going to add them to the platform bus in another call. And then we're going to add the PM domain in between the two. So as we do in this example code, we're going to do this OF platform device alloc, then we're going to set the PM domain, and then we're going to add it. Cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to implement code in the PM domains. So like in PM domain activate, we're going to get the, re the resources that we need for this driver. Basically, we're going to parse DT, which we don't even need to do because all the frameworks already do that for us. 
So all the PM resource frameworks, we're just gonna use them in this one, one file, in this one driver for the SOC, and we're gonna just get the resources. Great, we got them all before they were bound. I add these notes in these slides just so we know that these are some things that we haven't done yet. So we need to actually wrap this activate function for generic PM domains. Because right now it just does on off. And so with, when we want to actually manage the power of the device, we're going to just power on and off. We're going to set these, set the functions for power on and power off to be turn on the resources, turn off the resources that I got. And that's, that's pretty much it. We've done it. We turn on and off this power. And then what we need to do finally is remove all the PM code from our platform drivers that we have today. So my idea right now is just, we're gonna set the struct devices platform data to something that's non-null. So in this example, I just said, hey, it's just a one pointer. And so every driver that we have, we can now call dev get plat data and say, hey, is it non-null? Oh, okay, I, I must be uh, being power managed by an SOC PM driver. So let me just re remove all my PM stuff from my driver probe, especially. I'm not gonna get any of those resources that I'm never gonna use outside of my runtime PM callbacks. And I basically removed almost all the code in these platform drivers that don't need to use anymore because we're gonna power them on and off in PM, or in the device PM domains. So let's go over a quick requirements check in the last five minutes. So it works with existing DTs. I should probably add a star here because I add one compatible string, basically SOC 9000 to the SOC node, right? Otherwise nothing changes in the entire, in all of DT, nothing at all. I just add this so I know I need to probe one specific driver, not the simple bus, which is basically says populate all the devices that are children. And the other thing that's good is it removes all the SOC PM details, right? Because we, as we just described earlier, we just implement all these functions in, in the dev PM domain, like activate, dismiss, power on, power off. And we have a way to mi migrate by just setting that platform data to one. The other good thing is that we don't need to go modify DT to, to go add the power domains, right? We don't need to go fake it out and add a power domain property to every device because we've just associated them in software. And we don't have to go, we, we still let drivers, you know, use their consumer APIs if they want to, like they can still go get some regulator if they need to go change something or they can go get some interconnect if they need to change some other thing that's not like on off. They're still fine to work that way. Their bindings haven't changed and they're, they can still use all the consumer APIs. The other good thing is that we're gonna provide some consistent device power states because PM domains already hook into the system with runtime PM and system PM. And so they can pretty much power on and off and that can all work as we want it to do by, by just using runtime PM callbacks or doing system suspend and it'll power off your device already. And we can even extend this more because we can add performance states to the system through dev PM gen PD set performance state function that can be used by device drivers if they want to change their device performance state. And that'll just call into the PM domains that we implement in our SOC PM driver and let us say, hey, like, I want to go to a shallower PM state or I want to, you know, like clock this thing to the maximum speed so I can, you know, do some special graphics thing. And the other thing is that it's going to power on the devices at probe and remove because we're going to implement this function in, in generic PM domains to pretty much power on or power off. And we, if we don't want to change anything in generic PM domains, we can even do this by implementing activate function to just call power on. And the similar thing for, for power off, we can just implement dismiss and have a power off in the dev PM domain. But we can, I think we should change this to, so that generic PM domains are used and we don't have to do anything weird with these callbacks calling other callbacks. And the bonus thing that I feel like we have is that we can power off all these unused PM resources because if we make PM domains, we're gonna avoid requiring any drivers to be bound to, to their actual platform device. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all that PM code in a thing that always probes because the device won't be created unless this PM domain is also created. And so we pretty much like re remove the, the problem where we don't know if a driver is ever gonna probe. And we can also add an SOC PM domain that's like a catch-all, right? That can be the parent of all these other PM domains we create on our SOC driver, and that thing can be used to basically catch every device that's been marked as disabled in the system. So if they're disabled, we can just put them into this big PM domain, and then whenever the SOC goes to full runtime PM off or 
runtime PM suspended, I mean, or the whole system goes to suspend, we can just power off all these unused resources at that point. Right? And the good thing is that if, if the driver is never bound, we can even power off that driver for the device we created if it's status enabled or status okay, because the device, all the PM, power, uh, PM management is in this PM domains. And so if we don't even need to care if the driver ever probes, we still turn it off. And I feel like we can also let runtime PM decision just like float into user space, right? So we don't need to put any policy to say, hey, power off those unused PM resources. We just let the let user space decide, oh, this device is runtime and power enabled because I marked it as so in my PM SOC PM driver. And so maybe user space could say like, oh, let me look at all the devices that are in the system that are powered on. Maybe I should power those off because I don't need to use runtime PM for this. So let me just turn off runtime PM and then that thing you just make, make it go suspend immediately and power off that device. And another idea I have is that maybe we can enable runtime PM auto suspend for all those devices that we create and so that user space has like so many seconds before we're gonna power it off anyway. And the other, the other thing that's the bonus I feel like we got out of this is that we're gonna extend runtime PM because every driver is gonna wanna use runtime PM if we implement this because they're, that's the only way they're gonna be able to power on and off like all their resources at runtime. Otherwise, they're gonna just wait for a system suspend to do it. So my conclusion is that basically we need to use PM domains a lot more than we are doing today and, and basically make the code the same as ACPI and DT. And that's, uh, that's it. So what are the questions? I got one question back there. I can see it, barely. So, okay, so the question is like, how do you handle the loops between device drivers and su suppliers and consumers, right? Loops. So the power sequencing will be handled in the PM domain already because that will know I use all these resources for a device. Right, I use this clock, I use this regulator, and it knows when to turn on one or the other because that's all SOC information, right? So that's, that's solved, but I think you're talking more about like how do you handle some problem where some clock in is supplied to another clock controller or something like this, and then that clock controller needs to turn on this clock before that clock, or like this thing needs to get some voltage, like this clock controller gets some voltage and it needs to turn on the voltage so that the clock works? Is that what you're talking about? Basically all kinds of sets of scales because currently we have them in device drivers and so then I go into a generic huge board file or non-board file and I really feel that this, with this approach we are going to end up with a non-board SOC driver which handles all the devices in the, or which describes all the devices in the, in the system. Yeah, this, this SOC driver will not describe all the devices in the system because that's still going to be left up to device tree to say, hey, these devices exist. So if anything, it would describe like maybe a compatible string of I need to look at this device in particular to say, you know, I need to handle some corner case because I know I'm running on this SOC and this has this device and it's described in DT. So let me go look at that. Let me look for that specific compatible and then do something. I mean, that sounds fine to me. I don't think that's a problem. It's not like every device in the system is going to require a special handling, right? So it's not going to be that, that bad. But I agree that the loops is technically a problem, but clock controllers, like they, they are also devices and they can also have PM domains associated with them. So in theory, we can handle that special case by saying, hey, I'm running on this SSC and I know that I have this SSC clock controller. Let me go handle all the magic in PM domains still. I'll wait for this device to come. I'll wait for this other device to probe and provide that thing, right? And then, then get that resource and kind of tie it up and kind of try and avoid putting that detail in that SOC driver, unless we really need to. Yeah, so the loops are, can be handled between clock controllers. We can just wait for 
we don't need to wait at all. We can just let all these things probe, and then we don't need to technically power them on before they probe. So like they can provide all the resources, right? Because they're just providing to each other. And the clock framework can handle linkage, linkage between these clocks in the framework. And so these PM domains don't need to power on those clocks that these clock controllers are consuming because they don't really need them. Some of them, right? And it'll know because the SOC compatible will tell it, oh, this is, a, this is that one. And so this clock is not really needed to power on, right? It's just needed to link up. And so we can avoid that problem entirely. We just power on the things we really need to power on, not the things that are not required to power on. Okay. Any question over here? Yeah, hi. Um, should Linux have a way to bind devices without probing them? Bind devices. Well, binding is basically means probing. No. So in Linux, we know a device exists before probing it because we've populated it from DT. So like there's in, in uh, the driver core, a device, a struct device exists and it's added to the bus, the device exists. We know it exists. We haven't had to probe it with a, with a driver to figure out the device is there. So you're saying that there's no awareness of devices early enough, and that's why the deferred probes exist? I mean, deferred probes are mostly gone today because of the firmware dev link code. So we don't really have probe deferred loops as much, unless we get into the cases where like there's a consumer supplier and they're both dependent on each other, and then they just, it just gives up, and then lets probe defer happen. But that's pretty rare. Most of the other cases are solved, and so Devices are known and they exist. The problem that we have is that those, the OF platform default populate code pretty much just goes right through the system and says, oh, are you simple bus? Let me just make every device that is there and just add it all to the platform bus. Oh, I, my speaker got cut off. <laughs> are there more questions? I got one here earlier. So in the, the error handling, what's the plan for error inside the generic PM domains and also in pro or power on? So, oh, the microphone's gone again. Anyway, uh, so for the problem where like some driver or some PM domains need to get some power, resource before probe, that's not a problem because we can basically return eProbe defer from that function in like activate and then that won't probe, like we'll wait again to probe the driver. I mean the generic for the main probe, not the one from, from um... Oh, so you're talking about like the SOC driver, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the PM domains are gonna be associated with the, with the device and so the, all the code that gets it, all the code that gets the PM domain or gets the resources for the PM domain, that's not gonna be required in the SOC PM driver's probe. That's gonna be acquired in the, right before the device is attached to the PM domain. It's not gonna be done, like the, the consumer driver, the consumer driver, that's not gonna be bound before we, or that's gonna be attempting to be bind, binded, bound to the device. And that's gonna fail if some PM resource is not available because the dev PM domain is gonna get the resource and that's gonna say, oh, I don't have that. I can't get an EPROB defer. And then that's gonna basically bail on binding the driver at all. If we're not even gonna to try to bind it because we're not gonna be able to get the resources. And so same question for forum, if one of them fails, we just undo everything that was done before? Yes, we'll undo everything for power on because that's gonna to fail to turn on the device. Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, so having argued for runtime PM centric view of the world for a long time, I think this is great. So thank you. <laughs> um, I have one question. I didn't quite understand the, the, the clock, the new stuff you're proposing for associating clocks and regulators with domains, because at least in generic PM domains, we already have this PM clock API where in the device tree you can associate clocks, regulators, and stuff with PM domains already. So I didn't quite understand the, the stuff you were talking about adding. 
Okay, so you don't, you didn't understand like the, the part where when you bind the driver to the PM, to the device, yeah. the, the activate part, like getting the PM resources in these PM domains, you're wondering about that. Right, so we can do that for hardware power domains today. Sure, that's fine, but we don't want to have to describe anything in DT as using these PM domains because they don't really exist in device tree at all. They're not on hardware, right? So they're fully software defined. And so we could use the same PM clock add function you're talking about, I think, to do so, but we don't really need to. We can, I don't see any problem. Okay, I think we're over time. By a minute, but any other questions? Okay, cool, thank you.